Professor John Wetlofer. Could you summarize what this year's Nobel Prize is about? Yes. The overarching theme is what we could think about as an umbrella of complex physical systems. Of course, when we look out in nature, there are plenty of complex physical systems. But what emerged from um, the committee's work was the duality between the uh, study of Earth's climate, which is complex on scales from millimeters to the size of the planet, and Giorgio Parisi's work, on the other hand, which actually does com come back to climate, as he, as he mentioned uh, in the press conference. But he's building from the disorder and fluctuations of complex systems at their microscopic constituents and predicting the behavior, whereas the work of Shukuro Manabe is taking the components of individual processes and knitting them together to predict the behavior of a complex physical system. And Klaus Hasselmann sees both the value of the microscopic understanding and the implication of the macroscopic climate problem. And so I, I think that's a summary, even though we've divided the prize between the climate part um, and the disorder part, they really are um, linked. And how, how would you explain this prize to a child like 10 years old? Right, so I would focus on the process of the greenhouse effect. The hardest part to understand about why is it that if we put more carbon dioxide or water vapor into the atmosphere, the planet warms, is that everything is invisible. Um, we don't see infrared radiation, but we can think about the way in which the atmosphere interacts with infrared radiation, just like when you're driving down the road in a car, and your headlights um, on a clear night go as far as you can see them, whereas if there's fog, you see uh, that the fog is absorbing the visible light. And it's that which is important for the greenhouse effect in the infrared. It's just an analogy, but the light is absorbed and some of it bounces back to you. That's a little bit like what's happening in the greenhouse effect that has taken from 1824 until 1967 to really understand quantitatively. The work of Giorgio Parisi looks inside of glass. You can see through glass, and yet when it was made, it was flowing. It was hot and flowing like a liquid. When it's on the window, it's solid. So why is that? And the reason that is, is that it's made of both components um, in a different way than normal solids are. And everything is a complex system. <laughs> so, right, um, as opposed to having all your atoms in a row, this doesn't happen in a glass. There's a little chunk over here that looks like a solid, and this sort of looks like a liquid, and this looks like a solid, um, almost like you really spilled something, um, and it just sort of found itself organized on the floor. And coming back to climate, uh, what is actually the difference, the main difference be between weather phenomena and climate? Right. So crudely, the first thing you could say is that the climate is the average of the weather. We know that we can't predict the weather beyond seven ten de or to ten days, something like that. So then how can we predict the climate? Well, the weather doesn't except for extreme cases like tornadoes, the weather doesn't explode, you know. It rains and then it stops raining. Sun comes out. Um, the weather is chaotic, but it's, it's bounded. It doesn't uh, blow up. And the climate is taking big steps through the weather. And so it sees some average uh, on, on the big steps that it takes. And we know 
you know, it's very predictable that on average the temperature in Stockholm in December is, I don't know, minus 10. Um, maybe not, uh, minus 7. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Um, and in the summer, you know, uh, a high temperature would be 30 degrees. And, and so we know how the weather behaves on these every month. Um, and the question is, as we put more things into the atmosphere like greenhouse gases, how does climate change? How does that periodicity change? So what, what is the major obstacle actually to make climate predictions? Right, so it, it, people used to think it was just bigger and bigger and bigger computers. And, and so one direction there is to build bigger and bigger and bigger computers, which people have done. It gives you more and more realism. But it's not clear that that will actually solve the problem because we cannot track the smallest scales in the climate. And so the impediment is how do we numerically and mathematically resolve the small scales and yet still march the climate on in these broad steps. And that's a very, very contemporary area of research. And Klaus Hasselmann's thinking actually has driven that. So how come the Nobel Prize is awarded this year? In climate, you mean? Oh. Um, well, there's, um, there's a problem with trying to understand the physics of climate as opposed to a laboratory experiment. In a laboratory experiment, you go in on a Monday morning and you do your experiments today and you have your results today or tomorrow. Our observations are till right this second and then to the next second, to the next second. So we only know the future by making uh, predictions. And so we want to recognize the veracity of of basic physical arguments and models in trying to predict the future. How, however uncertain that is, we need to embrace the prediction and its uncertainty. And that's what happened now. That's, you know, so we could have said, well, why this today and why not, you know, last year? Um, well, there's a lot of things to choose from. And, and it seems reasonable now, given that the principal architects of this have been doing their work since the, the 60s, and that it makes sense to recognize this with such a prize at this time. So let's come back to the Nobel laureates this year. Did you talk to them? What did they say? So um, we called them right before the press conference, and we had trouble getting a hold of Giorgio Parisi, and then he finally uh, answered, and he was very excited. Um, and um, he also recognized, we described to him the prize, he also very clearly recognized the importance of the other part of the prize, which I thought was um, typical of him, of his in insightfulness, because he's worked across so many different areas. And then um, we spoke to Klaus Hasselmann, and then we spoke to Shukuru Manabe, and Klaus Hasselmann was dumbfounded, um, and he knows uh, Shukuru Manabe, but not Giorgio Parisi, and he was very, very pleased, as anyone would be, and I would say Shukuru Manabe was, um, to use an American English term, gobsmacked. Uh, he was, uh, he said, but I'm just a climatologist um, and and I think that's the point is that uh, we we explained to him our rationale and that he really did construct the models from which all future climate models were built and I think that scaffolding is essential um, for the improvement of, of predictions um, of climate my last question would be, what makes you excited about this year's prize? Well, first of all, um, what makes me most excited is that the, the physics is exciting. You know? um, and so we learn an enormous amount 
um, from our own research on the committee and from the, the international uh, community. So in a very selfish way, digging very deep into the history and all of the science that led up to their um, discoveries that are being awarded um, is just uh, liberating. You know. So for me as an academic, I've learned an enormous amount that I didn't know before, a lot of detail. And so that's a selfish perspective. The unselfish perspective, perhaps, is that I, I think this sends a message um, that there are these areas of physical science that really are important. And you would think that they were also not connected, but they are, on a fundamental way, they're connected. And I think that shows not just the world, but the scientific community, how these things are inter interwoven. Um, and I think it gives other people license to do new things. And I think that this holds up a light for, for other people going forward. Thank you, John Wetlofer. It's a pleasure to talk to you. <laughs> Thank you very much.